Today's workout is the beginner workout from my diastasis recti repair plan. This workout is going to help heal your ab separation and rebuild your core postpartum. It's beginner friendly and gentle, perfect for anyone who's just had a baby and is C-section safe. All you need is a mat. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to our three-part series for diastasis recti repair. We're gonna focus specifically on healing and repairing that ab separation that is very common with pregnancy. And we're gonna focus on rebuilding and strengthening our abs from the inside out. Let's get started. You won't need any equipment for this, just a soft surface. We're gonna begin with some deep transverse abdominal and diaphragmatic breathing. Come onto your hands and knees, take a deep breath in, inflate your belly, fill it up with air and exhale. Deflate your belly like it's a balloon, pull your belly button in toward your spine and Repeat, deep breath in, inflate, exhale, pull that belly in, keep going. You can breathe in and out through your mouth here. Relax your shoulders and just keep flowing through this. It's harder to do it while talking, so try not to. But I want you to focus on totally expanding your ribs so it's a deep belly breath, and you're getting that full rib cage, full belly expans expansion here. And relax. We're gonna move to a cat cow. We're gonna stay in that same hands and knees, quadruped position, 50 seconds. We're gonna tuck the chin. Look up toward the ceiling, let the belly hang here. Now round your spine, pull your belly button in toward your spine here. And repeat. Inhale, look up. Exhale, pull the belly in, rounding the back nice and high. Let's keep going, just move at your own pace. Try not to pause at any part of this movement. You're trying to make it really fluid. So this is our beginner workout for the diastasis recti plan. So we're gonna do everything very gently. It's great if you're newly postpartum and have been clear to exercise or you've just never really rehabbed your core postpartum. It's gonna be a great place to start and we'll move from there. And one more. Rest. All right, we're gonna to move to a bird dog. So with this, we are gonna start with just the arms and then do just the legs. So shift forward, one arm at a time, we're gonna reach it forward about shoulder level and switch arms. So one arm at a time, thumb up, push the opposite hand and then push both knees into the floor. As you do that, I want you to think you're pulling your belly button in toward your spine, just like we did with those diaphragmatic TVA breaths. We're doing the same thing here. And TVA, that stands for transverse abdominis. Those are your deep core muscles connected to your pelvic floor. And that is what's gonna heal your core from the inside out. We've gotta train the deep core muscles if we wanna rebuild the superficial muscles, which is the rectus abdominis. That's what separates to make room for baby. So we gotta start with the deep stuff and then rebuild from the inside out and work on those superficial muscles or the six pack. All right, let's rest. And then we're gonna move to the bird dog, legs only this time. So as you're moving the arms and the legs, you're trying to keep everything else still. So let's start with that front leg, extend it back to about hip level and then drop the knee down, switching sides. So you're gonna notice your body shifting a little bit as you move the legs. Try your best to stay square to the floor with your hips and your shoulders. Again, pulling your belly button in toward your spine as you're moving the leg and then pressing evenly through each hand. Now, if you can't get your leg quite up to hip level without losing your balance, just take it a little lower. You can flex your foot, you can point your foot. I want you to focus on that core. Again, engaging your TVA, that means belly button in and up, like you're zipping up nice tight pair of pants. We want that abdominal tightness to stay on. Couple more here. and rest. All right, we're gonna move on to our backs now. So carefully roll over. We're gonna do a supine march. Supine means lying on your back. We're gonna start with the front leg, bending the knee over the hip. Take it up, light tap on the toe, switch legs up and tap. Watch where I'm stopping, knee directly over hip. That's gonna put that pressure in your core. You take it in too far, core pressure comes off. 
shin comes parallel to ceiling, you can flex or point your feet here, and you wanna lower with control, pressing your low back toward the mat the whole time. Remember, zip that core up, belly button pulled in and up. Keep the breathing going, but we're not doing deep belly breaths here. We're keeping that TVA nice and tight. We're breathing, but it's less about that rib expansion right now. We wanna keep everything tight throughout these core exercises. Then you can take some deep breaths. And if it's too much to do the entire interval for 50 seconds, take breaks as you need them. Let's rest here. And we're gonna keep that back pressing toward the spine for our next exercise. It's a reverse march. So you're going to start with your knees over your hips here. It's gonna be a bit more challenging. We're gonna drop one leg at a time. Tap and lift. You're gonna feel your back start to lift a little bit. Do your best to pull that belly in, hold it down. And if it's too intense here, do as many as you can and then go back to the previous exercise. We want those knees directly over hips. You're gonna feel a lot of pressure there for your low abs, those deep core muscles. And that is what we want. If you're bringing them in here, you're not gonna feel that pressure. It's better to do a few with proper technique than to try to do the whole interval and your technique is suffering. So remember that, if you, even if you only do 15 seconds of exercise, you're still getting the benefits. And it might be one of those you work your way up. You do this workout several times before you move on to the intermediate version. And that is what I would suggest in addition to completing a few of my other postpartum ab workouts. Rest here. All right, we're going to move on to a single leg abduction exercise. So you're gonna start with your knees over your hips back toward the mat. We're gonna drop the front leg, opening the hip, come to the front and then back up, back leg goes down and up. Now, you don't have to go super low with that leg. Go as much as your hip flexibility allows. My hips are pretty tight as are most women's post birth, postpartum. So just do what you can. If it's only a couple inches, go for it. Again, we wanna focus on that core control, back pressing toward the mat. If you're feeling your back lifting, you're feeling your abs pooching, doming, coning, I want you to rein it in. Don't go as low. Or again, you can take some breaks to reset your form. Now this is getting those abs, but also you can feel it's getting into those hips, a good mobility stretch and also working those outer hip muscles that often are weak and tight as a result of pregnancy and then just postpartum demands on our bodies. All right, let's rest here. We're gonna move on to a glute bridge. So feet are close to your butt here, belly in and up. Let's reset that core and we're gonna drive through the heels, bringing the hips up and then all the way down. Now, some people think you need to push your hips up as high as possible. No, I want you to keep that feeling, that tightness in your glutes and your hamstrings. So that means you go up, but not too much to where you feel it on the front of your legs. If you feel that burn, that tension transfer to the front, you've gone a little too high. So controlled, stopping where you feel that sensation in your glutes, where you're pulling your belly in and not creating an arch or an excessive arch rather in your low back. There's gonna be a natural curve there, but if you're driving up so high that your back is arching, that's too intense. We wanna keep that work safely in the back body here. And a glute bridge is one of the best exercises you can do. The glutes are a part of your core and we've gotta do the whole package to get it stronger. Rest, all right, we're gonna to move to a glute bridge. This time we're gonna hold it up and pulse at the top. So nice tiny pulses about one inch up and down. Here we go. And again, as your flexibility allows, you might have to go a little lower if this is too intense to stay up high. Totally fine. Maybe you need to do a few pulses and then tap down rest. Also fine. You can tailor these workouts to where you're at physically. That's why I made them timed intervals. There's no pressure to do a certain amount of reps to feel successful. It's successful if you're maintaining good technique for as long as you can. Again, that might look like 15 seconds. It might look like the whole interval, but do what you can. And again, you can come back to this workout. No pressure to move on, especially postpartum. It's important to give your body a lot of grace and start slow and give your body time to acclimate before you push it because we don't wanna push it too far too soon. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. All right, we're gonna to move to a prone position. So that's on your stomach. If you've had a C-section recently, this one would be one you may want to avoid. We're gonna take the arms out wide and we're gonna lift the front arm and the back leg straight off the floor, looking toward the front hand. Come down, look at the floor, switch to the back. So you're looking toward your hand, 
you're keeping your chin tucked. Leg comes straight off the floor, arm comes straight off the floor about in line with your shoulder. This is called our prone airplane. So we're squeezing that glute. We're trying to get the chest off the ground, but I'm not straining my neck by looking up. See, I'm keeping my chin tucked, looking toward the direction of that arm. And then using my opposite hand to push out of the ground and lift higher. So we wanna to try to aim for getting the chest up and then the leg totally off the floor without bending. And you can move quickly through this one as long as you're doing so with good technique. We just wanna focus on lifting, getting that upper back, glutes, and core. All right, push back into a quick child's pose. Release those hips for a second. And then there you have it. That's our full beginner diastasis recti workout. So. Like I said, this one's gonna be a good one to come back to. Don't move on just yet. Do this one a few times or until you feel like you've really mastered those exercises. Not that they're necessarily easy, but you can do them with control and confidence. Once you are there, go ahead and move to the intermediate version of this workout. Again, it's a three-part series, so be sure you feel comfortable, confident, and controlled moving through the exercises before you go to my next workout. In addition, I also have a postpartum ab program and a C-section recovery program if you're looking for something more specific in your newly postpartum or post-C-section. I'll see you guys back here for our next workout together.